Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Moto Ramblings. Today I'm on Copper, my 2022 v -Strom. Wait, hang on, no. Sorry, that's the channel I was just watching. However, if you have not heard of Moto Ramblings or Patrick, I would appreciate it when time permits that you would pop over to Moto Ramblings on YouTube and take a look at what Patrick has to offer. I say that because I've been doing it for two years now, and I look forward to hearing the ramblings of Patrick over on Moto Ramblings. And as of today, Patrick is at 895 subscriptions. Now, what's important about that number is when you get to 1,000, it's just an awesome, round number anyone who has a youtube channel they want to get to that first 100 and then they want to get to that first 1000 it's just a number it has no actual meaning you don't magically get anything for it but what you do get is the satisfaction that you've at least entertained 1000 people enough to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So please, when time permits, go take a look at what Patrick has to offer. I believe it has value. I absolutely positively enjoyed hitting subscribe on his channel and it's paid off over the years. I chuckle, I laugh. I wonder why the hell he's riding the bike where he's riding it. I wonder why his big yellow bike still hasn't been wrapped in a better color. But I have a good time. I enjoy my subscription. If you get a chance, pop over and see if you will too. Now, as to what I'm doing today, in the spirit of Patrick, I'm gonna ramble while on my motorcycle. Hope you can see how beautiful that is. Today is quite literally the very first day where I've been able to hop on to one of my bikes here in upstate New York and not be cold. It is 63 degrees. And let me tell you, that's awesome. The last time I rode my bike in New York, it was 43. This is fantastic. The difference two weeks will make. I am mostly out for a ride because of how the weather is, and I'm also testing out to make sure I didn't screw up my rear brake. I recently had a problem with both of my KTMs, and the problem I was experiencing with this, the 390 Adventure, was that after 25 plus thousand miles, I was still running on the brake fluid from India. The brake fluid, the nice folks at Bajaj had put in there. I've never bothered to bleed them, and they've just been overheating that brake fluid since 2020. And uh, it's now 2024, so that's probably not very responsible. When I went to take this bike out for a ride before going to the Palmetto ADV Fest, I found out I couldn't compress those brakes and I just had no rear brake. Which honestly, finding that out on the road was no big deal. It's a great thing to have, but it's certainly not something you have to have. What I did find out though, was that I can't trust KTM as a rule. This bike, this is a Bajaj bike with a KTM badge on it. And when people hear that, they go, oh, it's a bike from India. Ah, oh, how reliable is it gonna be? Well, let me tell you, having owned this bike and put 25,000 miles on it, and having owned a 790 Adventure from 2020 and put mm, just shy of 11,000 miles on it, this 390 is more dependable. I can count on this bike. If I do the proper maintenance, it treats me well. I had intended to do a comparison video between the 390 and the 790 at 20,000 miles on the 790. And what I was going to compare was specifically 
what was 20,000 miles of maintenance like? What did I have to do to maintain the bikes? What did I have to do to repair the bikes? What actually broke on the bikes? But I can't really make that video. Number one, because I'm never gonna hit 20,000 miles on my 790 Adventure because it's already broken. It's already broken enough times that it's a poison pill at this point. I think of that bike and I don't think about enjoyment. I don't think about the good times I've had and there were many. All I can think about is, when's it gonna break down on me next? Where am I going to be when the 790 doesn't start? And that's, that sucks, it's awful. It is an incredibly exciting bike to ride but I can't trust it. I just can't trust it. And the second reason I can't really do a comparison video for maintenance and breakdowns is because this 390 Adventure didn't break down in 20,000 miles. It hasn't broken down in 25,000 miles. I am not a mechanic. I know just enough to screw things up. I call myself a part swapper. I can take anything on the outside of a motorcycle if the internet has diagnosed it for me or a friend has diagnosed it or I've researched it enough. I can take that part off and I can put a new part on, but I'm not a mechanic. I don't actually know how to repair. And with my 790, I'd need to be a mechanic. Electrical gremlins, problems coming up. I lack the ability to fix those. There's a cam problem with the 790 from 2020. I cannot go in there. ADV Tech tore his engine apart. No problems. The man has the knowledge to fix things. He can own a KTM, a pure, true KTM without a warranty. I don't. So when it comes to riding my motorcycles, I hop on this and sure, anything can happen. At any moment, this bike could stall and go out, but it never has. I can get on my 390 Adventure and I'm still confident. I am literally feeling great about how this bike has treated me. It stood the test of time. We're four years in. It stood the test of miles. We're over 25,000. And it's more importantly, proven itself to be, while not the best materials in the world, I think I've mentioned before that it literally came with stripped bolts. It's pretty well put together. Uh, a little bit out of the ordinary for my video. I do appreciate it if you listen to any of it or all of it. And I hope you can count in your bike and take care.